Hello, everyone. Previously, I walked you through how to use both ChatGPT and Google Gemini in detail. Today, we're checking out another super popular AI chatbot, Claude, made by a company called Anthropic. I'm going to show you how to use all of Claude's main features and also share what makes it stand out from the crowd. Claude first came out in March 2023. So, yeah, it launched about four months after ChatGPT. But then came Claude 2 and 3, which really caught people's attention thanks to their strong capability to process long document. Fast forward to February 2025, and Anthropic dropped their latest model, Sonnet 3.7. This one seriously stepped up the game, going head-to-head -head with ChatGPT and Gemini and pushing the whole AI space to move even faster. After using Claude myself for a while, I also noticed some of its strengths. First off, the way it talks feels way more natural, more human-like. Claude tends to have a smoother, more thoughtful tone in conversations, and it usually avoids sounding too robotic or stiff. Second, its ability to analyze data and turn it into visuals is actually super impressive. I'll show you a hands-on example of that later in the video. Another thing that stands out is how Claude positions itself for professional use. You can even set your work background in your profile, which shows they're really aiming to cater to professionals. And ever since they released Sonnet 3.7 model, the new extended thinking mode has seriously boosted its reasoning skills. Combined with Claude's reputation for being accurate and less likely to hallucinate, it's already being used in serious fields like finance, law, and healthcare. All right, let's jump in and start using Claude. I'll start by showing what features are available to free users, and then we'll dive into what extra tools you get if you're on the pro plan. Once you enter the website claude.ai and sign up, you'll get into Claude's main interface. Right here in the middle is the chat box, where you can start chatting with Claude. Down here on the bottom left, there's a plus icon. You can use this to upload a file, a photo, or even pull in data from GitHub. If you move a bit to the right, this section lets you adjust the tone of Claude's responses. You can make it more concise, more explanatory, or more formal. Of course, you can also customize the style yourself. Here, you can upload a writing example for Claude to mimic your tone, or just describe the style you want in your own words. All right. Down here on the bottom right of the chat box, you can pick which model you want to use. Free users can also access the latest 3.7 Sonnet model. There's also 3.5 Haiku and 3 Opus models available. 3.7 Sonnet focuses on logical reasoning and analytical thinking. 3.5 Haiku is the fastest one, perfect for quick everyday questions. And three, Opus focuses more on handling complex topics and generating more sophisticated content. If you're a paid user, you can pick whichever one fits your needs. Right now, for free users, the default is 3.7 Sonnet. Below the chat box, you'll see a row of handy sample prompts you can check out if you're interested. All right, next, up here on the top left, there's an icon you can click to open the sidebar on the left. All your past conversations are saved there. Just click on any old record to go back and review your chats. If you want to start a new chat, just hit New Chat. Now, let's talk about the settings under your profile in the bottom left corner. Here, you can tell Claude about your work function and how you'd like it to respond to you. Scroll down a bit and you'll see two features, Artifacts and Analysis Tool. Make sure to turn both of these on first. I'll demo both of these features in just a bit. Then switch over to the appearance page where you can adjust the font style. Personally, I prefer the middle font option, so I've switched mine to that. That's pretty much the basics of the interface and settings. Next, let's jump in and start chatting with Claude directly. So first, I'll just ask it to simply explain the difference between a quantum computer and a classical computer. Okay, so it'll give me a pretty clear response. Down here at the bottom, you can copy the answer, give it a thumbs up, or if you're not happy with it, ask Claude to try again. Now, let me quickly mention a few tips for chatting with Claude, basically some prompt tips. First, be clear and specific. Make sure your instructions are clear and detailed. 
If you're asking about something more complex, try to include all the background info you can to help Claude understand exactly what you want. Second, use interactive refinement. Take advantage of back and forth chatting with Claude to tweak and refine anything you're not happy with. Also, breaking a big question down into smaller steps helps Claude analyze it more deeply and give you a better answer. Third, ask Claude how to prompt. If you're not sure how to phrase your question or you feel stuck, just ask Claude how to write a good prompt. Most of the time, it'll give you pretty solid guidance. Next, let's talk about the upload file feature. For example, here I upload a semiconductor industry analysis report. This report is pretty long, so I can ask Claude to summarize the key points or pull out the important information to help me quickly understand the content and save time. All right, so I ask it to create a summary that's under 250 words and extract the key points from the report in a list. Okay, this way we can quickly grasp what's inside a really long document. Let's look at another example. Here I upload a screenshot of Tesla's Q1 2025 earnings report. Then I ask Claude to give me some investment advice based on this screenshot. Okay, so it summarizes the key points and gives me some suggestions. Next, I ask Claude to take the data from the table in the screenshot and turn it into a visual. And this brings us to the next feature I want to show you, the analysis tool. You can see over here on the right that it grabbed the data from the screenshot. Claude's analysis tool can organize and analyze data, then present it visually. Let's check out how it turned the data into charts. It looks great, and there's even a short summary at the bottom. Personally, I think this feature is really impressive. All right, let's do one more example. Here, I upload a set of fictional sales data. Then, I ask Claude to generate an interactive infographic for me. So first, it'll analyze the data, and then it'll start creating a visual presentation. You can see it puts the most important info right at the top. And then down here, it includes a few charts to visualize the data. At the top, there are even interactive filters, like buttons to filter by region or by product. At the same time, you'll see a summary of the data over here on the left. Personally, I think Claude's ability to generate infographics is really impressive. It automatically picks the best type of charts to use, and you can even interact with them. This is not only useful as a tool for an initial data analysis, but you can also get ideas for how to visualize your data just by looking at the charts it creates. Next, let's talk about another feature, artifacts. Actually, the section over here on the right where the infographic is displayed is what Claude calls an artifact. You can adjust this block left or right as needed. Basically, artifacts are the blocks where Claude shows specific generated content, like code, lists, tables, and so on. It's kind of like the Canvas feature you see in ChatGPT or Gemini. Let me give you a few more examples. I asked Claude to help me write a simple web page where I can enter a product name and search for its prices on Amazon, Walmart, or Target. When you ask it to write code like this, it'll automatically generate an artifact block. Actually, having Claude write code for you is one of its strong points. So here, it built a simple web page for me along with the matching code. It even gave me step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up the page. Now, I don't really have a coding background, so I'd still need to spend some time figuring out whether the code Claude wrote will actually run properly. But the main thing I want to show you here is how the artifacts feature works. It lets you see the code right away and even preview the results right here. All right, let me show you another example. I ask Claude to help me plan out a one-year Japanese study schedule. I tell it that I have zero background in Japanese and how many hours a week I can spend learning. In the end, I also ask it to organize the key points into a table. So here, it starts generating a plan month by month. Okay, if you ask it to make a table, the table will show up in the artifacts block. Next. I ask it to add all the content to the artifacts panel on the right, and it go ahead and copy everything over there for me. One nice thing about using artifacts is that you can interact with Claude and edit the content right in that panel. Here's an example. 
I can just highlight the part I want to change. Then I type in my instruction, like asking it to add two more online sources right here. Okay, it'll add them directly for me. And once it's updated, you'll see a version two of that plan up at the top. If I want to understand a certain section or a specific word better, I can just highlight it and ask Claude to explain it. That's pretty much how it works. Let me show you one more example of how to use artifacts. I want to create an affiliate marketing website, so I ask Claude to map out the entire site structure and tasks using a mermaid chart. When you do this kind of diagram conversation, it'll also pop out in a dedicated artifacts panel. Here you can see the site architecture it drew for me. This makes it a lot easier to understand the whole process. All right, so everything we've covered up to this point is part of Claude's free features. Next, I'm going to show you some features that are only available for pro users. The first paid feature I want to show you is web search. When you turn this on, it lets Claude pull in real-time information from the internet. I'll start by leaving web search off for now, and I ask it to list all the LLM models that came out after January 2025. It'll respond by saying its data only goes up to October 2024, so the info might not be that complete. Let's see. It mentions Claude 3.7 Sonnet, GPT 4.5, Gemini 2.0 Pro, and so on. All right, now I turn web search on and ask the same question again. This time, it searches the internet. Now we're seeing more up-to-date models like DeepSeek R1, ChatGPT 03, Gemini 2.0 Flash, Google Gemma 3, Grok 3, and so on. The info is definitely a lot more complete. The next feature that's only available for paid users is extended thinking. This extended thinking mode can only be used with the 3.7 Sonnet model. It basically takes the already strong logical reasoning and analytical thinking of 3.7 Sonnet and pushes it even further for more complex questions. When you turn it on, Claude will spend more time thinking before giving you an answer. For example, here I ask it a decision-making question. Should I expand my organic food business in Singapore or South Korea? Please consider multiple factors and analyze it for me. When you use extended thinking mode, Claude can thoroughly analyze multiple dimensions of a complex decision, weighing various factors and looking at how they might interconnect. All right. Next, another feature available for paid users is projects which you'll find in the menu on the left side. Inside a single project, you can manage multiple conversation files that are all related to a specific topic. This is super handy for long-term or more complex tasks. For example, I'm researching self-driving cars lately, so I need to read a ton of documents. In this case, I can create a project and upload all the related files. It's basically like building your own knowledge library inside that project. Then I can ask Claude to summarize the key points, and it'll answer based on the files I uploaded. You can also set instructions inside a project. This lets you tell Claude how you want it to respond, and it'll apply that style or approach to all conversations in the project, so you don't have to repeat the same prompts every time. For example, here I write, summarize document in the instructions. Then when I upload a new file, I don't need to type anything else. It'll automatically follow the instructions and generate the summary for me. Another big benefit of using projects is that when you have multiple conversations or ongoing chats, Claude will remember what you talked about before. This way you can build on your previous conversations instead of having to repeat the same context from scratch every time. Finally, once you're on a paid plan, you can also connect a few Google services, like Google Drive, Gmail, and Calendar, so Claude can access the content in those services. So that's a basic walkthrough of all the main features Claude offers, both free and paid. While Claude doesn't have the image generation powers like ChatGPT, which makes it a bit weaker in the visual creativity, it really makes up for it in other areas. Claude's strength is in handling text, 
analyzing data, and turning that into clear, useful visuals. That makes it super appealing for professionals who need solid tools for writing, research, or making sense of complex info. So now give the free version of Claude a try. It's a great way to see what it's capable of for yourself. In the next video, I'm planning to cover another AI chatbot called Grok. It's made by Elon Musk's company XAI. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. All right, that's it for today. Catch you in the next one. Bye!